What's popping people? All right, today we're going to be looking at GPT 4.0, which literally just came out a few days ago. And we're going to be looking at ways that you can use it for SEO and AI SEO. Now, you can do this on ChatGPT, you can do this in the playground. I want to test some of the features in the playground first, just because it's interesting to see what you can build using the API and some of the cool stuff you could do with it. So, with that, let's get straight into this. All right, so one of the most obvious things that we can actually do with this inside the playground, as you can see, is we can actually train it to create blog content. Now, you'll see right here, I've got GPT-4.0 selected. Now, this, now, we can select between the chat, the assistance, and the completion. If you're going to be using GPT-4.0 to generate content, it's probably not the best format to use inside the chat section, right? So what we're going to do instead is create an assistant right here. And you can see I've already created like the Twitter bot, the Chipper Birds bot. RIP Chipper Birds is gone now. That one got clapped a long time ago, it feels like. But what we can do is we can create a new one. I'm going to create an assistant right here. I'm going to call this Happy Clapper SEO bot. And what we can actually do inside the file search section is we can upload some files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download my 200 chat GPT AI SEO prompts. You can get that links inside the comments and description inside my free course. This comes with loads of different stuff, as you can see. And we can basically train chat GPT on how to do like entity research, link building research, etc. So what I'm going to do from here is I will upload the file, as you can see. So we can click to upload here. I've selected the documento, attach that up there. And you can see right here, we can choose the model, right? So Previously, it was set up on GPT-4. I'm going to select 4.0 just to test what it's like. I've heard that number one is it's a lot cheaper and number two is twice as fast. And when I've used it in the chat feature as well, it's been a lot faster. Now, there's some new features inside chat GPT assistance that I think a lot of people haven't really talked about yet. But as you can see right here, this was updated April 2024. And there's some crazy stuff like it can ingest 10,000 files per assistant, which is like 500 times more than it could do previously. You can actually upload vector store objects. And so we've uploaded the file right here, as you can see. We can also enable code interpreter if we want, but I'm not gonna do that. We'll keep the temperature and the top P as the default settings. And then we can also give it some instructions. So we can say, right, you're an AI SEO expert, writing articles to rank my blog. Then we're just gonna bang out a little bit of cheeky keyword research. So I'll plug that into ClickSoul, like so. Links inside the comments and description if you want to get a discount on this. And by the way, whilst I'm doing this, if you haven't already booked in a free SEO strategy session, check out the link in the description. I'm going to go into phrase match over here and just find something easy that I can create content around. The reason that I'm showing you this is so that you can figure out how to do it as well. In case you've never done the keyword research before. So I'm going to search for max difficulty 10, as you can see. And there's a bunch of easy keywords right here. So we've got SEO expert in Dubai. We'll say keyword equals SEO expert in Dubai, create an article based on the prompts attached, optimize for this keyword. I'm hoping it's going to use the actual prompts I've given it. If not, we can tweak this prompt in a minute and make it 3000 plus words. I actually don't expect it to be able to create that much word count, but let's see. And then we're going to hit run like so. It looks like I've got to change my usage limit. So we'll just change that quickly now. We'll increase the limit from zero, which makes sense. It looks like there's some new auto recharge settings, so I'm just going to set these up quickly. But at least you can see how messy this can be if you're doing it yourself. So I'm going to switch off the file search right here, and then we'll hit run and see if that actually works. All right, we're back in the game. I'm going to re-upload the prompts right here. There we go. We'll switch on file search, switch the model to GPT-4.0, and we'll just go with a basic prompt like that. Now it's running the retrieval, as you can see, and it's creating the content. And actually, the article is pretty long in itself. Now, bear in mind, there's no editing on this yet. And it's generating the whole article. For some reason, it's come up with some crazy Japanese text right there. Let's check the word count. 1,000 words. Not bad. For a basic prompt, it's okay. I wouldn't actually use that content. But if we tweak the prompt, it should be a lot better. So now what we're going to do is test a different prompt. and say, write a comprehensive article about the keyword. We'll take the keyword right here. Plug that in, format the headings, output as HTML, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to insert word count equals 2,000 words. And we'll say insert some relevant external links to sources. 
Let's see what we get here. We're going to leave the HTML here. You can see it's generating the content. It's creating the H3 and H2 tags. It's creating some FAQs as well, so you can see right here. It's also inserted external links, which we can check in a second, see if they actually work. We'll copy that. We'll plug it into the code editor over here. Let's just have a look through the article and see what it's like. Why you need an SEO expert in Dubai. Check the word count, 1,270 words. We'll check if this link actually works. Actually does, that's not bad. Now at this point, I'd still have a look through the content, right? Because what I can spot straight off the bat. Now, if we look through this article, it's okay, but it's not great. Now we can actually tweak the prompt to make it a lot better, right? So if we look at this prompt right here, one of the things that I would definitely make sure you improve is the conversational tone of the article, right? So I'm going to say needs to be humanized. So I'm going to take this prompt right here from my humanized in SAP, which is inside my free course. And we'll plug in that prompt right here. And then there's a few optimizations we can make as well. So for example, including the keyword in the first and last sentence, pretty basic, not just insert an external link within the last paragraph of the content, but actually putting it naturally several times throughout the content. Let's have a look what else we got. So I think in terms of improving the content output, if we humanize the output right here, insert some relevant external links throughout the content, we for about five different sources, and then we'll include the keyword in the first and last sentence. I think the humanizing prompt is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting right there. So we'll try plugging that in now. I'm going to clear this and we'll run that again and see how it's going. Now, in the meantime, whilst we're waiting for that to load, we can actually check how much it's used to generate that content so far, right? So how much does it cost us per article? And if we check, it's pretty cheap so far. That's cost us 16 cents so far to generate two 1000 word articles. Pretty cheap right there if you ask me. You can see that it's still is cut off right there when we're generating the second time round. So I'm going to hit run again and we'll take that text and preview it here. So this content right here, in fact, let me show you what it looked like previously. So this is one of the reasons that I'm showing the prompt engineering today is because you'll learn how to create a better output from the content that you're creating. This is useful for you or your team if you're generating content with AI. But what you can see right here is that previously, the content itself is quite bland. I would say that's borderline spam right there. And there's nothing interesting about it, right? Now, this is the difference between creating AI spam and creating something that's actually pretty readable. So I'm going to duplicate this tab and we'll compare it side by side. So this is the trashy spam that you don't want. And this is the better quality content. I wouldn't say it's perfect and I'll come on to what you can do in a second to improve it. But what you can see right here is that it starts with a rhetorical question. It's got the keyword in the first paragraph right there. Keyword again, the content is nicer formatted with some bullet points, etc. It's actually much easier to read. Obviously the output is not great sometimes. So for example, you can see these FAQs, you would need to split them up and edit them manually, but you can see it's included the keyword right there as well at the end and inside the title. Now, if we check how long that particular article is, it's about a thousand words but the content quality is a lot better. Now, obviously the actual word count, you would base it on what your competitors are trying to do, but that just gives you a feel and an idea for how to improve the content, how to improve the prompts, etc., and how to improve the output. Now, what we can actually do is because we have a much better prompt that we can actually use, we can take this prompt right here and then plug that into the instructions. And we'll say ask for their keyword, then do this. And so from here, We've said ask the user for the keyword, then do this, and then it shows how to create the actual content. Now you could probably use these instructions inside ChatGPT as well, but I do think the API is going to give you a better quality output. So now we don't even need to prompt it anymore. The assistant is trained and ready to go. And we can say, all right, create an article for me. All right. And then it said, sure thing, but to get started, I need to know your chosen keyword. What's the keyword you want the article to focus on? We can say SEO expert in Dubai. We'll hit command and enter if you're on a Mac, just to save some time. You don't want to be clicking buttons all day. Now, one thing that I would definitely recommend improving inside the prompts is this, this sort of stuff, right? This generic nonsense, this AI fluff, like in today's digital age, that sort of thing. And so what I'm going to do inside the instructions as well, is put important right here and we'll say no fluffy AI jargon. Keep it conversational and natural. 
no generic buzzwords, keep it neutral and conversational. Now, I think there's a lot more we can do on that to improve the prompt, but for now, that'll probably do. So I'm going to clear that now and we'll go again on that. So I'll say, write an article, take the keyword, and then you can see that the actual content itself has cut out that, you know, in today's digital age sort of nonsense. And so we'll copy that, slap it into the HTML code previewer. You can see it's bolded the keyword there. I still think the article requires a lot more editing, but it's better than it previously was. Now, what I would actually do after you've created the content and generated it is I would recommend using this manual SEO quality control checklist right here to step-by-step -step improve the content, make sure it's better quality, remove all the spam and the nonsense inside it so that you've got a strong editing process before you publish it and that'll polish off the content and make it a lot better. So what I'm actually going to do is I will take the prompt that we've talked about today and I've put it inside my 200 chat GPT AI SEO prompt section right here. It's called GPT-4 I prompt. This is inside my free course if you want to get access to it for free. And inside there as well, you also find the manual quality control checklist. And if you want free access to that, links inside the comments and description for this free course. And if you scroll to SEO systems and then 200 chat GPT prompts, you'll find it directly in there. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to get access to a free SEO strategy session and get this personalized to your website, to your business, if you want to learn the best link building strategies for your website, if you want to know how to navigate all the new crazy AI updates that are coming along, then make sure you book in that free call. And we can just discuss one-to-one -one exactly how to make the most of it, how to get your website ranking so that it makes more money. Also, if you haven't seen it already, we've actually got a technical SEO guest coaching session coming to the YouTube channel soon that will show you how to rank number one with technical SEO, some safe strategies to beat the latest updates, and some simple, fast SEO tweaks to optimize for the new AI overviews update. Now, if you want to ask questions for the coach before the call, and if you want to get early access to that session, then make sure you join the SEO Elite Circle. Links in the comments and description, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.